Ladies and gentlemen, for reasons you will soon understand, the makers of this motion picture ask you not to divulge what you are now about to see to any living person. Thank you. We take you now to the independent duchy of Grand Fenwick, the smallest country on the face of the globe. This tiny but prosperous nation, which occupies a total area of 15 and 3 quarter square miles, lies high in the French Alps, somewhere along... I beg your pardon. Somewhere along... Oh, yes, here. Grand Fenwick was founded in the year 1430 by Sir Roger Fenwick, a poor but honest British baronet, who, as he later said, took a fancy to the neighbourhood and moved in. Thus, thanks to Sir Roger, Fenwick is the only English-speaking country in Europe. Modern Fenwick is ruled by the Duchess Gloriana XII, who is a direct descendant of Sir Roger and is beloved by all her subjects. Although still in mourning for her departed consort, Count Leopold of Bosnia-Herzegovina, who disappeared during a tiger hunt 27 years ago, the Duchess takes an active interest in her country's welfare. Fenwick's Parliament. Here is the hereditary Prime Minister, Count Rupert of Mountjoy, a graduate of both Oxford and Cambridge. Fenwick's Forest. Here in these sheltered glades, the welfare of his feathered and furry folk is watched over by Fenwick's hereditary forest ranger, Tully Bascom. Fenwick's army. Although Fenwick has been at peace for 500 years, the longbow remains the national weapon. Here the army exercises under the guidance of Tully Bascom, who is also hereditary field marshal and grand constable of the armed forces. Aim. Fire! If many Fenwickians seem to resemble each other, this may perhaps be ascribed to the influence of the founder, who was in every possible way the father of his country. Fenwick's prosperity is based on its only export, Pinot Grand Fenwick. A small but sturdy local wine with a virile but friendly bouquet. For some obscure reason, the United States has always been the major market for this wine. Thus, secure in its prosperity and invigorated by its high alpine climate, Fenwick has always been a happy country. However, in 1959, a California wine grower bottled an imitation of Pinot Grand Fenwick and called it Pinot Grand Enwick. Backed by a vast advertising campaign and sold at a lower price, this imitation soon drove Pinot Grand Fenwick out of the American market. As a result, in a very short time, the Duchy of Grand Fenwick was in a state of absolute crisis. One fateful day, Gentlemen, you made me drop a stitch. Your pardon, Your Grace. But has the Prime Minister never thought of sending a protest to the United States about this Californian fellow and his imitation wine? My dear chap, I have sent not one protest, but three. Mind you, the situation is complicated by the fact that we have never officially recognized the United States. So we've had to send all our protests through Monte Carlo. The sad truth is that each of these protests have been ignored. Until today, when I received this. What is it, Bobo? A pamphlet from their Department of Agriculture on how to grow grapes for wine. But if that goes on, we'll be bankrupt. My friend, we are bankrupt. As of today, we are living on petty cash. Good heavens. If only Paul Leopold were alive today. Your Grace. Gentlemen. Our situation is indeed desperate. We stand poised on the brink of disaster. There is only one way out, war. We must declare war on the United States. <laughs> but we could never win such a war. Of course not, but we could win the peace. 
I've given this a lot of thought, gentlemen, and I'm perfectly positive I am right. You must remember, the Americans are a very strange people. Whereas other countries rarely forgive anything, the Americans forgive everything. There isn't a more profitable undertaking for any country than to declare war on the United States and to be defeated. True, true. No sooner is the aggressor defeated than the Americans pour in food, machinery, clothing, technical aid, and lots and lots of money for the relief of its former enemies. In other words, gentlemen, in effect, we declare war on Monday, we are defeated on Tuesday, and by Friday we will be rehabilitated beyond our wildest dreams. Yes, but is that honest, Bobo? No, not really, but it's terribly practical and infallible too. I give you my word, Your Grace, it will solve all our problems. But we have no army. Oh, pish posh, who needs an army? Twenty men or so would be quite sufficient. Oh, and who's going to lead them? Tully Bascom, of course. He's our hereditary field marshal and grand constable. Tully? No, not Tully. He's, well, he's a very nice boy, but he's never been any good at games. Exactly. Uh, you can't send Tully on a mission like this. He's got fallen arches, flat feet, sinus, migraine, claustrophobia, and high blood pressure. Apart from being nearsighted and getting dizzy in high places. <laughs> we are not asking him to climb the Alps, you know. All Tully has to do is to get the men over there. Once they try to land in New York without visas, they will be arrested. And uh, that's all there is to it, really. I don't want anyone hurt. Of course not, Your Grace. <coughs> I'll tell Tully to be very careful. Besides, we can send Will Buckley with him. Buckley was a sergeant in the British Army in the other war. He can act as interpreter. Well, gentlemen, there's only one way. We have but one choice. Bankruptcy or prosperity? Which will it be? I move we declare war on the United States of America. As leader of the party of the common man, I say that war is reprehensible, barbaric, unforgivable and unthinkable. And I second the motion. <laughs> We're at war with America. Well done, sir. An historic moment. And a profitable one, too, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, take this down to the post office and get it into the post immediately, will you? Certainly, sir. Oh, and Will, you'd better put a special delivery stamp on it. At once, sir. My friend, the die is cast. But our cause is just. There is a time and tide. To be or not to be? That is the question. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Our country, right or wrong? Right. We'll drink to that. To our glorious defeat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tully. Yes? What do you want? Well, sir, it's about this war. I'd sooner not go, if you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean, Tully, and I'm surprised at you. You know how badly we need the money. Yes, I know, sir, but I don't like to leave the forest just now. It's the mating season. Tully, this thing is bigger than the mating season. This is your country calling. Yes, yes. Now, run along, Tully, and get your army together. All right, sir. And don't do anything to make the Americans angry with you. I'll be careful, sir. Oh, come, come, Tully, look here. I do enjoy every moment of it. It's great sport. Besides, the, the ocean voyage would do wonders for you. <laughs> I get seasick, sir. My dear fellow, with their new stabilizers and all that sort of rigmarole, the modern ocean line is as steady as a robot. I get seasick in robots, sir. Tully, please. Well, there you are. Pretty good turnout. Yeah. I shouldn't think they'll want to go, Will. Not with the harvest coming up. I expect I shall have to appeal to their sense of patriotism. Men of Fenwick, do you love your country? Yes! When you hear the name of Grand Fenwick, do your heart swell with pride? Yes! And if your country calls, will you rush to enlist? No! no. Oh. I don't think I'm very good at this, Will. Better leave it to me. Yes. Now then, I want 20 volunteers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Form of it, ranks. Have the devil. And stand still. Well, men, here is the situation. We're at war. 
Uh, we are going to invade the United States of America. Good luck, mate. Now, if you'll let me explain how this situation... <laughs> I told you with the harvest coming up, they wouldn't want to go. <laughs> I'll give them harvest. Hold it on there! Fenwick, have no fear. Providence will smile upon you because your cause is just. I know that you will all uphold the honor of your country. And let it cheer your hearts to know that your government has managed the money for your return fair home, if necessary. Yeah. Bless you all. Right man, up there. Come on in. Right, move. Sorry, no right. Three, move. Right man. I do hope the Americans are kind to them. They're a fine, fine monument. The best investment this country ever made. of war to the president congress and people of the united states of america greetings act of aggression <laughs> it declares a state of war exists between grand fenwick and the united states of america. <laughs> oh those boys in the press room <laughs> always making with the jokes <laughs> Up on deck, Will. You are up on deck. Oh. Why 
Why don't you go below if you feel seasick? Well, I'll be all right. Uh, well, well, uh, tell the men. I think I'd like to be alone. Listen to this, sir. The President of the United States announced the practice air raid alert, which will affect the entire east coast of the country. Ships will be forbidden entry into any port until the alert is over. When does it start? In less than an hour, sir. New York completely deserted. That should be quite a sight. It's because of this new bomb they're working on, I suppose. That's it, sir. The Q-bomb, they call it. They say it'll make the H-bomb look like a firecracker. Hmm. It'll never replace the British Navy, Tompkins. Oh, no, sir. Look, sir, look, sir, the Queen Elizabeth. Not with everybody! See anybody? Looks deserted. Yes, that's what I mean. There doesn't seem to be anyone around we can surrender to. There's nothing moving, Will. No boats or anything. Is today Sunday? No, it's Monday. We'd better check with the skipper. Yeah, yeah. There it is, the land of the enemy. It's big. Well, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Are you crazy? Don't you know we're supposed to lose the war? Well, no one told me. There's 175 million people in the United States. Yeah, but there's only 10 million in New York. We'll outsmart them, that's all. C'est impossible. Where is the health department? Customs, immigration. We were just wondering the same thing. Ah, uh, but it is very peculiar. Hey, see that big building? Well? Well, I saw it first. It's mine. At the table, at the table! Now then, men, please make sure you've got your passports and health certificates handy. Sir? Well, what is it? The invasion map, sir.
It's getting me down. Why doesn't somebody come and capture us? Where is everybody? Maybe it's a holiday. Why don't they come out and fight? Fight? I know, they've declared New York an open city. I think we should go back to the ship and wait. Wait? Wait for what? Just wait. Oh, come on. got rusty in the rain. <laughs> germ warfare. Since when have there been sticky germs? Chewing gum. Germ warfare. Oh. Why don't we storm a building, sir, just for a start? No, let's keep going. We're sure to find somebody. Come on. Underground. Cowards. Hey, you down there. Why don't you come up and fight? Don't. You'll make them angry. Here, Marshal. Look at this. It's an air raid drill. Everybody's underground. Maybe we should go underground, too. We can surrender when it's all over. Air raid drill today. The President today announced development of plans for a new bomb, infinitely more powerful than the H-bomb, and capable of devastating an area of two million square miles. Designed by the noted scientist Dr. Elfrid Cokins of the New York Institute of Advanced Physics, a prototype of the new bomb is expected to be a reality in a matter of weeks. Give him the map. Maybe you were right. Maybe we should wait at the ship. No, no, we must get off the streets now. After all, we are guests here. We don't want to spoil their air raid drill. Ah, uh, yes, there's the arsenal. That's on 64th Street and 5th Avenue. We can cut through this uh, Central Park over there. All right, men. All in favor of going over there right away and surrendering, say aye. Aye! You're a fine, disciplined body of men. Let's go. Come on, what are you doing up here anyway? But all I wanted was some cigarettes. Oh, borrow one. Okay, give me one. Yeah. Thanks. All right, now come on, get going. And don't let me get all you up right. here again, eh? Good thing this isn't a real air raid. Some people just want to get killed. They just want to get killed. Look at that. Decontamination squad. Boy, that's the job I wanted. No walking. Yeah. Air pin, please. I don't have any, Papa. Well, a uh, uh, bobby pin then. Hmm. So. Finished. That's the warning apparatus in place. You really have to get some food and sleep now, Papa. You've been at it without a break for 48 hours. Yeah. Now, I've had a bed put up in the Institute shelter. Shelter? What shelter? There's a practice air raid alert on. We should have been down there an hour ago. An alert? For why? Because of you, Papa. Because of you and this bomb of yours. Yeah, I see. I wonder what they would think if they knew about my little working model. I think that they would all be very afraid. I'm glad that warning apparatus works. Yeah, of course. Come on, Papa, please. Yes, for how long? It could be some time. They want people to get used to long alerts. And then I will have to remove the detonator to make it harmless. It's very sensitive. It can go off like, 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 like. Are you sure you haven't got a, a hairpin? Hey, what's going on here? Why aren't you two in the air raid shelter? What's the big idea? What's the idea of coming into this lab without knocking? Look, sister, this is an alert, so let's be alert. Come on, out, out, out. Look, you'll get out if you know what's good for you. Are you kidding? Now, you two can go peaceable or I can drag you out. So which is it going to be? Hey, what are we doing? Playing games here? Come along, Pa. Don't you know that's Dr. Kokins? Kokins, Smokins, who cares? Come on, let's get going. Wait a minute. 
Culkins? You mean the fellow with the Q-bomb? That's right. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, hi, Doc. How do you do? Hey, this is it, huh? That's it. But it's a secret. Now, do you mind leaving us alone? My father wants to disconnect it. What? You mean it's connected? It sure is. And what's more, it's on a hair trigger. So please don't slam the door on the way out. Yeah, sure. Okay. See you later, Doc. Yes. Goodbye. Hey. Why isn't he in Oak Ridge with the rest of the scientists? He's eccentric. He likes to work alone. But I thought this thing was only in the planning stage. It was. This is his first working model. He wants to surprise everybody. <laughs> Great sense of humor. Oh, one more question. Why is it so different from an H-bomb? The H-bomb? Huh. This new bomb is based on quodium, which is 100 times more powerful than hydrogen. In fact, my father uses an H-bomb just to trigger this one off. It could probably blow up all of North America. Yeah, and some of South America also. Any more questions? Yeah, where do you have to go to be safe? No, that is a difficult question. Carbon-14, you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's a dangerous thing you got there. Yes, it is. Let's just hope it'll never be used. That's a nice thought. I feel better already. Now, you really must try to be more careful. Goodbye. Uh, just a minute. You haven't had anything to eat since yesterday, Papa. How about asking this man to bring us some sandwiches? Look, I got an awful lot of things to do. Oh, now, you wouldn't want my father's hands to shake from hunger, would you? What kind? Cheese? Chopped liver? Chopped liver? Chopped liver. Uh, with a pickle, please. With a pickle. We're supposed to be taking a shortcut. I'm tired. Oh, chin up, Copley. Perhaps when we get to the arsenal, we'll give us a nice cup of tea. Well, someone's left the engine running. Maybe we can get a lift. Yeah. Hey! What's the matter? There's some guys hanging around the truck. Air raid wardens? No, these are funny-looking guys. What do you mean, funny-looking? I mean funny-looking, like fish. Who are you kidding? What do you mean, like fish? They got scales. Where? All over them. Mulligan, you sick of something? Came from outer space. They're off a flying saucer. Off a Sputnik. Oh, look. They've seen us. Let's get out of here. Men from outer space. They're off a flying saucer. <laughs> I'm getting out of the suit. Me too. Don't shoot. We'll get into trouble. Hold it. They're not from outer space. They're Americans. They probably belong to this truck. Let's go after them. Tell them we're sorry. No, it's too late. Let's go and surrender before we get in any more trouble. Come on. Now, just a minute. We shouldn't leave this truck with the engine running, should we? We'll turn it in. That'll make them happy. All right, men. Into the truck. We're right to the arsenal. Come on. You wait here. I'll get to a phone and call special reports. Yeah, right. Okay, you come on down the subway. Hey, wait a minute. I'm a decontamination man. Yeah? Where's your uniform? I threw it away when I was being chased by the men from outer space. I'm waiting for my partner. Come on, you've got to come quietly. Listen! Come on, come men on. Men from Mars! I saw them! I'm men from Mars! Special reports? Special reports. What's your name and section? O'Hara. Section 4, 300, subsection 3, decontamination. Okay, go ahead. There's a bunch of men from a flying saucer just landed in Central Park. How many? 50 or 60. 50 or 60 men from a flying saucer. Say, what is this? Just what I said. I saw them. 50 or 60. With metal heads. All covered in some kind of shiny stuff. 
They fired at us with some kind of a ray gun in Central Park. Listen, bud, you've been told to keep out of saloons, haven't you? The job you're doing is serious. Where are you now? I'm in a grocery store on Columbus Avenue 69th Street. And I ain't been in any saloon. Well, stay right where you are. I'm going to send somebody over. Off a flying saucer. 300 of them in Central Park. Men from Mars. 400 of them in Central Park. We have been invaded from Mars. Thousands of them. Men from Mars. Flying saucers all over the place. Men from Mars with ray guns. Yeah, I know. Right, men, number up. Two, 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 two. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two, sir. All present, correct, sir. Good. Now then, lads, remember, there is nothing wrong in surrendering to overwhelming odds, provided we do it in a military fashion. Yes. Carry on. Right, men. Fall in, Sparkly. All right, lads, follow me. Left wheel, quick march. Hold. Ali? Yes? Look at that. New York Institute of Advanced Physics. That's not the arsenal, is it? No, we're lost again. Yes. All right, men, back to the truck at the double. Will. Mr. General Stippert, get me Washington. Yes, Snippet. Oh, and Mr. Secretary, I have to report an emergency situation in New York. There's a rumor going around the city's been invaded by men from Mars, and it's spreading like wildfire. Did you say men from Mars? Yes, sir, in Central Park. Well, how did that rumor begin? Well, a civil defense squad leader turned in a report. Was he drunk? Well, we thought so, but I thought I'd better make a report of it anyway. All right, Snippet. You go out and make a personal inspection of that park and report to me. This kind of nonsense can ruin an exercise designed to protect the largest city of our nation. A city which I don't need to stress has been entrusted to your care. Get me my jeep. We really better not wait any longer, Papa. We have to get down to the shelter. Very well. But I am hungry. I'll do the bomb before we go. Well, I don't understand why that warden doesn't come back with the sandwiches. Even with white bread, with no pickle. Oh, thank goodness. Just put the food here with... Oh! Who are you? What do you want? Well, what is it? Um, I'm Tully Bascom, and this is Will Buckley. Is that Dr. Cokins? Uh, uh, yes, I am. Oh, how nice. We just took a chance, and here you are. You didn't bring my sandwiches? Sandwiches? Um, uh, no, sir. We've come to capture you. Is this some kind of a joke? What are those uniforms? You're not wardens. Uh, no, miss, we're soldiers. I haven't got time to explain now, but we're at war with America. We came over here to surrender, and now I think if we take Dr. Cokins back with us, we shall be in a much better bargaining position. That is it in brief. They're both crazy. Yes. Phone the police. Call the army. Now, that's no use, sir. Everybody's underground. What's that on the table? It's a coffee percolator. Uh, coffee percolator. Is it? I've never seen an American percolator. What do I push? Don't push anything. I think that's the cue ball. Yes. Small, isn't it? It's my portable. Well, well, well. We better take it along too, Tully. Hmm? Yes, that's a very good idea, Will. Corporal! Well, shall we go, sir? You leave my father alone. Oh, you're his daughter. Oh, well, you better come along as well. Look, I don't think you know what you're doing. Helen, Helen, no, no violence, please. The bomb now, Mr. Grand Marshal, please permit me to, to dismantle it first. I'm sorry, sir, we haven't time. How do I carry it? Carefully. Mr. Constable, don't stumble. Don't fall, because if you fall, all of America falls with you. I see.
Here we go. Fall in, you men! Please treat the bomb with great care. Do be careful. Get him in quickly. Come along. Soldier. I'm General Savagepool. Who are you? What's going on around here? Why are you dressed like this? I'm Field Marshal and Chief Constable Tully Bascom and you're prisoners of war. Field Marshal and Chief Constable of what? The Duchy of Grand Fenwick. All right, Fenwick. You're under arrest. You'll get a hundred years for this. We'll talk about it in Grand Fenwick. You'll be treated with all deference due to your rank, General. Uh, take him away, miss. A hundred and fifty years on bread and water. interrupt this program for an important announcement. Contrary to rumor, there are no from Mars in the city. Do not panic. What did he say? Hey, cut that out. That's my radio. Panic. What did he say? Men from Mars in the city. So stay where you are. We have been invaded by men from Mars. So did you hear that? Where you I are. knew it. I knew it had to come. Men from Mars in the city. So stay where you are. We have <laughs> Ahoy there! Well, Field Marshal, you want to wait very long. How did the war with the United States go, huh? We won! Mr. Secretary, sir. Yes, Captain, what is it? It's General Snippet. He's still missing. Oh, that man's an idiot. I'll have your star for this. But they found his jeep at the New York Institute of Advanced Physics. They... Go on. But they say it was shot full of arrows. Arrows? That's the report, sir. They're flying them down from New York. Also, there was a flag. On the arrows? On one of the custom sheds at the docks. What flag is it? Nobody's identified it yet, but they're flying it down, too. Also, those, uh, rumors about men from Mars, they're still spreading. I'm gonna stop this alert. There's something funny going on, and I don't like it. A foreign flag on a custom shed? Yes, sir. Uh, Father Gill, you're in charge of Pest Exchange Relations. I think we all realize how important it is to the well-being of any community to have a helpful, friendly PX. So, uh, be on your toes. And under the circumstances, gentlemen, I see no reason why we can't let the Americans have our wine at our generous discount. Right. Agreed. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Mayberry, first impressions are always the strongest. So be sure and give those smiling, boyish GIs a fine, friendly welcome when they arrive. Oh. <laughs> and uh, as soon as we get the money, we simply must get hold of some of those malted milk machines, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And not forget about the uh, hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Which uh, brings me, gentlemen, to the question of non fraternization. Now, the occupation authority is certain to be very strict in this matter, and naturally, we will want to cooperate in every possible way. I should imagine that uh, non-fraternization will last for approximately, what, um, 48 hours, eh? 48 hours. After which, gentlemen, we will want those lonesome GI boys to feel that this is a real home away from home. <laughs> I think I've dealt with everything. Are there any questions? No. no. Good. Except, uh, shouldn't we have heard something by now? My dear fellow, not to worry. Even a complete nincompoop like Tully can't spoil this war. <laughs> 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 Keep moving. I don't want any more exercise. Up and up. Field Marshal's orders. Move. On the double. On the double. It is 
worse than sitting on a barrel of gunpowder. Much worse. He won't let you dismantle it. No, I told him it was dangerous. He said he wants it dangerous. He's power crazy. He knows whoever has the bomb has the world by the tail. There is only one way to save us. Now you must persuade him to let me make it harmless. I must persuade him? Why me? He likes you. Well, I don't like him. For America? No, sir, not me. For mankind? I hate him. That is irrelevant. Not to me. Please, do it. Is it absolutely necessary, Papa? Absolutely. Sorry, visiting time's over. Yes, I am just coming. Absolutely. Okay. Will you please tell the dictator I'd like to see him? Who, ma'am? Baskin. Oh, yes, ma'am. Are you a typical American girl, ma'am? Come on. <laughs> Come in. You wanted to see me? Yes, as a matter of fact, Mr. Bascom. Mr. Bascom! You wanted to see me? Yes. Is everything all right? Oh, wonderful. Couldn't be better. A two-by-four cabin on a rocky old boat with a deadly bomb ready to explode under the floor. What more could a girl ask? Oh, that's nice. Thanks a lot. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, you could let my father dismantle the bomb. I'm sorry, I couldn't do that. Please, as a personal favor to me? No, no, I, I couldn't. I knew it wasn't any use talking to you. Go away. All right. I think you're holding me. I am? Is this the way you treat all your prisoners of war? I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to offend you. I hope you're not upset. No, I'm not upset. Do you forgive me? Yes. Can I go now, please? Not just yet, please. Surely, Mr. Bascom, despite everything, we can still be friends, can't we? Yes. Yes. That's nice. I've always admired strong, silent men like you. You're awfully young and handsome to be a, a real field marshal and everything. Oh. Do you like American girls? I don't know any Amer American girls but you. I like you. That's nice. Would you like to kiss me? I wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. You can turn around right now and kiss me if you want to. Really? Really. Oh. Listen to this, Broadbent. Look out for a pirate ship flying a double-headed eagle. She may attack you. What's that mean? I can't imagine, sir. Oh, a ship on the port bar, sir. Is that so? Well, perhaps she's seen this pirate ship. Hello! Hello, you down there. Have you seen a little... Notre ticket pour Grand Fan Week. Que, que se passe-t-il, monsieur Est-ce que vous pouvez m'expliquer Est-ce que c'est un bal masqué ou un, un Mardi Gras à Grand Fan Week Oui. Oui, oui. Monsieur, monsieur, ces hommes sont complètement fous et nous sommes leurs prisonniers. Non, 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 non. Bon appétit, mademoiselle. Monsieur, monsieur, mais, mais quel langage elle parle Help oui. This is a kidnapping Inform the United States Embassy that All seven... Right, Take on. your hands off me! Ah, non, non, s'il vous plaît, monsieur, un moment. Ce monsieur habillé en soldat, là, c'est un Américain? Oui. Uh, un Américain? Oh, c'est un peuple merveilleux avec des cœurs chauds, généreux, plein de bonne humeur. Et puis un, un peuple jeune, mais enfin un, un peu timide, mais néanmoins un, un peuple sur qui l'on peut compter, n'est-ce pas? 
Oui. Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir. Au revoir, monsieur. What was all that about? I don't know. I don't speak French. Hurry, please. I can't keep the president waiting. And don't forget that declaration of war. No, sir. Fine thing. The United States and the Grand Duchy of Fenwick are at war, and it takes the FBI to find out about it. Yes, sir. The declaration was found behind the radiator in that fellow's office in the State Department, wasn't it, sir? Yes, sir. I mean, yes. Anyway, Chester won't like it on the island of Yap. But how am I going to tell the president that we've been successfully invaded by a bunch of 15th century Europeans? Oh, I'm sure you'll find a way, sir. And all over some imitation wine. But what I can't understand is why they had to resort to war. There are many ways of settling differences short of war. And we've always been nice to little countries all over the world. Yes, sir, but they did send us some protests, didn't they, sir? And we ignored them. Thanks. How am I going to break the news to the president that we've lost the war? Lost the war, sir? Just because they landed and took a few hostages and then got away again? Listen, this is top secret. Not only did they capture Dr. Kokins, but they also took his working model of the Q-bomb. The Q-bomb? Well, that means... Yeah, that... sure, they just about control the world. How am I going to tell that to the president? Thrilling. Isn't it exciting? Where am I smelling salt, Seda? Hello, Bobo. Happy day. Uh, uh, shouldn't I be here by now? Do you remember what that telegram said? Yes, it said, uh, I'm arriving approximately 2 p.m. with Americans and wonderful news. Love, Tally. Good, good. <laughs> I hope they don't bring too many GIs. They know we're a small country, don't they? Oh, of course they do, of course. Anyway, they're very considerate about that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming! They're coming! They're coming! They're coming! Actually, there's been a slight change of plan. Uh, I know it'll come as a surprise, a pleasant one, I hope, but we sort of won. You sort of what? Well, sir, it's a long story, but we captured the Q-bomb, the most destructive weapon in the world. And we got some prisoners, too. Uh, this is Dr. Kirkins, who invented the bomb. This is his daughter, Helen. This is General Snippet. And these are New York policemen. Oh, and uh, this is the bomb. You blithering idiot. Lady. Please, if this bomb should explode, it will wipe out most of Europe. I beg of you, let me make it harmless. We can't do that, Your Grace. If they make it harmless, we haven't won anything, just some prisoners. Oh, dear. This is most terribly complicated, isn't it? Um, put the bomb away somewhere in the dungeon, and uh, the, the doctor and Miss uh, Pokins can have the rooms next to mine. Uh, would you like orange or tomato juice with your breakfast? <laughs> 
Orange, please. Orange. But, lady, this bomb is not the kind of prisoner you can shut up in a dungeon. It, Listen, it... everybody, this farm is stolen property. It belongs to the United States of America. Now, you stop that. We want it fair and square, Your Grace. Give it back, please. If you don't, you'll live in terror for the rest of your lives. Give it back. It's the honest thing to do. It's the wise thing to do. It's, it's the American thing to do. There goes a red-blooded American girl. Your Grace, uh, this is General Snippet. He's a real general. I warn you, madam, I know the Geneva Convention by heart. Oh, how nice. You must recite it to me some evening. I play the harpsichord. Just wait in here, one minute. Come on. In here, all of you. Come on, there. Thank you. And you, sir. Take your hands off me. You think you are. I... Psychological warfare. Brainwashing. Remember, men, only your name, rank, and serial number. What if they torture us? Never mind what they do. Don't talk. Can we scream a little? No, oh, the first thing we do is form an escape committee. And then... Well, there you are, General. Well, what do you think about our exhibits? I'm disappointed in you, lady. Really? But you'll never get away with it. There are international laws for the treatment of prisoners. You can't torture us, and you can't keep us in this cell, either. My dear General, this is not a cell. This is a museum. We don't do these things anymore. Oh, oh really? Oh, 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 well, I know it all the time. I, I'm just testing you fellas. Well, if you're ready, I'll show you to your room. Just a minute. Are there regulation size cells eight by six? I really don't know. I've never measured them. And meals. They've got to be served on standard size tin plates. I don't believe we have any tin plates here, General. Then we refuse to move. Unless you convince me that my men and I will be treated according to the regulations, I'm not budging one inch. Excuse me. I see. Are you sure you won't have something to eat, General? Only if it's served on a tin plate. Very well. Follow me, gentlemen, will you? Men, stand on your rights. I'll show them that they can't put. Men, where are you? I... Men! Men! And you? No. I hope the general's okay. Mm -hmm. Tin plates, eh? Huh. I have tin plates. the news. The situation seems grave tonight and lights are burning late in every chancellery on the continent of Europe. More men are under arms than ever before in the history of the world. In Parliament tonight, the Prime Minister said that Britain and Grand Fenwick were united not only by ties of language and history, but by blood, and that it was only a matter of pure accident that the tiny duchy was not a member of the Commonwealth. Therefore, Her Majesty's government would do all in its power to protect the integrity of this British outpost across the Channel. There were cheers from both sides of the House. In Paris, the President stated that not only was Fenwick historically a part of France, but the interests of these two wine-loving and wine-growing countries were identical and would be maintained at all costs. There were scenes of excitement in Moscow tonight where the Premier said that although the Soviet Union had invented a Q-bomb of its own many years ago, the peace-loving workers of the USSR would do everything necessary 
to prevent the Fennec bomb from falling into the greedy, blood-stained hands of the imperialist, warmongering hyenas. In the United States, the New York Yankees defeated the Milwaukee Braves 6-2 in the final game of the World Series, the American version of football. Meanwhile, there is no word from Grand Fennec, which now seems to control the destiny of the world. The tiny country apparently remains calm, unconcerned, and indeed almost indifferent to the rising tension. China. It says, if there is anything we can do to help you against the United States, please don't hesitate to ask. Warmest regards. Impossible. No matter what, we simply can't do business with Red China. It's not from Red China. It's from the other one. Well, gentlemen, we're in trouble. Now, what are we going to do about it? Well, I don't know what all the fuss is about, sir. We can take a plane with 40 paratroopers over to that little jerkwater country and get that bomb and this coke and sell before they know what's hit them. Sure, sure I'm with it. it. General, it's not quite that simple. Admittedly, we are at war with Grand Fenwick and legally entitled to attack them. But do you want it recorded in history that a nation of our size attacked the smallest country in the world? Hey, you know something? We're stuck. We sure are. And now the French have offered eight divisions to protect Fenwick from attack. The British are considering 14. Egypt has offered six and a half interest in the Suez Canal. Now, naturally, they all want to take the bomb home for safekeeping. Argentina, Brazil, France, Germany, Italy. They all want to help us. It's impossible. We fought a war and reaped as the fruits of victory disaster. Well, it was all your idea, Bobo. My idea? <laughs> My idea was perfectly sound. Only an imbecile could have won this war, and he did. I know, but he... he meant well. And the Russians have offered 20 divisions and have told Fenwick they want an answer within 48 hours. Well, we'll give them 30 divisions. Sure. General, you don't seem to appreciate our position. We're at war with Fenwick. How can we send troops to protect our enemy? Hey, you know something? We're stuck. And as a result, we now have this frightful engine of destruction, which at the mere rumbling of a farm cart can destroy us all and the rest of Europe with us. And are we to go to war with the whole world because of it? Oh, I know what our impetuous young friend there will say. Guard our frontiers. I say, let us give America the privilege of guarding its own frontiers. <laughs> at least they can afford it. Your Grace, we must give them their bomb back immediately. I'm not so sure about that, Bobo. I mean, the Americans are a wonderful people, and perhaps we shouldn't have taken their bomb. Anyway, Bobo, even if we give it back to them, some other country will go and invent a Q-bomb of their own. And then we'll have an X, Y, Z bomb. And someday, one of them will go off. Boom! Then what does your grace suggest? I really don't know. But I think we should wait. Wait? <laughs> wait for what? I don't know. Just wait. I see. Well, in that case, I resign. So do I. They're all so sensitive. Well, Tully, I'm afraid you're Prime Minister now. Do try and think of something, won't you? Uh, well, I'll uh, do my best, Your Grace. There's a good boy. Oh, dear, dear. It's all so confusing. Having the bad conscience of the world in one's own home is very difficult. I do wish Leopold were here. But we won, didn't we? The world isn't the same anymore.
or something. Make peace with them. That way we can protect them. That's precisely what the president hoped you'd say. But uh, unfortunately, the Secretary of State is still busy in the Far East, so it's up to me, I'm afraid. So I'll fly over to Fenwick immediately and try to arrange an armistice. Agreed? Yeah, yeah Agreed. fine, sure. Who is it? May we come in? No. Oh, I see you're still angry. I'm still a prisoner. May I say how much we both enjoyed your speech when you first arrived? If you enjoyed it so much, why didn't you let me finish it? Who are you, anyway? A friend, Count Mountjoy, Her Grace's chief advisor. This is Mr. Bent, a leader of the loyal opposition. What do you want? Uh, in return, may I ask what you want? I thought I made that clear. I want to get that bomb back to America. And my father and myself with it. And General Snippet, and the policeman as well. Why not? Hey, whose side are you on? The side of sanity. In this case, dear lady, yours. We see nothing more advantageous than your immediate return to America with the bomb. Do you mean that? Absolutely. We just want to get out of this mess. What have you got in mind? Well, uh, we suggest you take that naughty bomb away. And what is more, we will help you do it. You mean take it back to America? Yes. We shall return for you within the hour. Be prepared to escape. Till then, dear lady, adieu. Oh, you American women are so charming, so very... Charming. Look, we've only got an hour. Sit here. Tally Bascom, remember? How could I forget? What do you want? I just wanted to talk to you about being friends, like you said on the boat. That was on the boat. You and I can never be friends. Goodbye. You really mean that? Yes, I do. Get out! <coughs> you get out of here! You screamed! You keep that on! The water was cold. How dare you come in here when I'm stuck in this miserable barrel? That barrel was made by a very old firm of barrel makers. Who cares? A barrel is a barrel. Now you get out. All right, I'll wait out there. Don't wait. Come back tomorrow. No, I'll just wait if you don't mind. <laughs> Do you wish to see my credentials? I've come here to discuss a very important matter with the Duchess Gloriana. Our orders are to admit no one, sir. But this is very important. That's what they all say. I've come here to discuss the surrender terms. Whose? Ours. You'll have to wait here with the others. Guard! Aggressor! We were all told to wait here until given permission to enter by the freedom-loving workers of Grand Fenwick. Oh, yeah, sure. Now, ah, guard. A little caviar, comrade. Never touch it. Well, General, we haven't much time. Yes, but shouldn't we have Dr. Cokins disconnected first? We can't find him. We looked everywhere. But I... Come now, General, please. General. Well, who's going to carry it?
Shall we? Okay, okay, come little dumpy. Oh, have fun while ye may, ye may. Away, away, upon the hay. And have fun while ye may. Look, Bascom, there's no use hanging around. I have nothing to say to you, so for the last time, will you please go? I see. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, and if I never see this antique tourist trap of yours again, I'll be a happy girl. Antique tourist trap? You seem to forget we won the war. It was an accident. You snuck up on us. It was broad daylight. Everybody was underground. Well, anyway, we won. We weren't looking. And we've got your bomb, and there's nothing you can do about that. You stole it. Is stealing part of your primitive culture, too? It's captured booty. It belongs to the United States. And you belong to me. You're my prisoner. father's waiting with the others. Would I lie to you? Frankly, yes. Thank you. I promise you he's waiting with the others. Now, please, please come along. Who is it? It's me again, Tully. You can't come in. Go away. And I've just come back to say that I'm sorry, and also that I've thought the whole thing over, and my problem is that I love you. You do? Yes. And furthermore, Helen, I think you love me. I do? Yes. Can I come in now, Helen? No, no, you just wait there a minute while I think. Well, take your time then. Come on. He said he loved me. Congratulations. I think he means it. Yes, he's an idiot, please. Well, he's silly, but he's nice. Well, write him a letter then. I think I've always liked him. So have I, my dear, but please let us go now. Where are they? Some transportation you have arranged, I must say. It belongs to the Duchess. I only hope she doesn't find out, that's all. I've got my own worries. Helen? Helen? Where's my father? Uh, yes, where's her father? I thought you had him. I knew you were a snake, you snake. My dear girl, there is nothing to worry about. We shall look after your father, I assure you. You just get the bomb home and he will be perfectly safe. You not only expect me to leave him, but you don't think we try to escape in this thing without the bomb being dismantled, do Little you? Little lady, there is no time to argue. Please go. Bon voyage. Where do you suppose the doctor is, anyway? Haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> Helen? My girl and my bomb. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the end of our film. However, something very much like this could happen at any moment. We just thought we ought to prepare you and more or less put you in the mood. Thank you. And now back to our story. Five. I have another throw. One. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I bomb Philadelphia. Who owns Philadelphia? I do. Ha! <laughs> you owe me 500 heavy bombers. Here. Now it's my turn. Four. One, two, three, four. Take a chance. Go to salt mine. Uh-uh. <laughs> Fortunately, I can pay a fine instead. I get Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Not a bad game. I agree. It's called diplomacy. It's my chauffeur's, actually. Jolly good fun, I think. My throw? Yes. Oh, 
Stop it, you idiot! Stop it! Fix the car, you idiot! Don't you think you ought to hold this for a while? After all, it's your father's. Oh, no, not me. I'm only a girl. Hurry it up, boys. Gently. Get out and push! Now don't jerk it. Steady. Put some weight behind it. Easy, boys. Run into that haystack. By Jove. Come here, you guys. Come on, let's get out of there. Get on, snip it. Bill, are you all right? <sighs> Come on, hurry up. General Snippet, are you all right? Oh, oh what's going on? Oh, let's get going. <laughs> get out of here. Well, sir, I've never been a prime minister before, and um, uh, anyway, um, point one, the California wine must go off the market and we go back to business as usual. Do you want that in the peace treaty? Oh, yes, sir, we want that in the treaty. And we want a million dollars. You mean a billion dollars? No, sir, no, just, just a million. You can't expect us to give you a, a measly million. That's less than we spent in Germany in one city alone. Yes, but you see, sir, they lost. Well, I can't promise to get that through. You may have to take a billion. Well, if you could try, sir. Yes. You know. 
and uh, we'd like some of that to be in the form of bathtubs and other plumbing equipment. That's right, Helen, isn't it? Yes, dear. Yes. We're going to be married, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, what about the bomb? Well, uh, the bomb stays here, and uh, Dr. Kokin's, too. We want him to develop a chewing gum with a Pinot Grand Fenwick flavor, which, uh, naturally, we expect to export to the United States, sir. Well, do you want me to include that in the peace treaty? Absolutely. Uh, oh, yes, that, that, that must Very be. Very well. But now, what about the bomb? Surely you realize that you can't keep it indefinitely. Well, sir, we'd like your president, uh, who we admire very much, to try and persuade the United Nations to let the little countries of the world look after the bomb. We want a general disarmament, and we want this League of Little Nations to be in charge of the inspection, to see that it all goes through smoothly, you know? I see. I think. But look, what you're proposing isn't new. Everybody's been crying for disarmament for years, and nothing happened. What are you offering the big nations of the world in return for their arms? Well, sir, we offer them trust. You see, uh, they can't agree on anything because they all suspect each other. I think we all hoped things would be better after the last war, but in many ways they're worse, all these bombs and things. Well, do you really believe that the big nations are going to trust a group of small, neutral nations to set up a disarmament policy for them? Do you think they'll agree to that? Well, I hope so, sir, because if they don't, we just have to explode the bomb. But you'd all be blown up, too. You see, Mr. Secretary, if there were to be an atomic war, Fenwick would be destroyed anyway. The way things are, we're just prolonging the agony, aren't we? I see what you mean. Well, America wants nothing more than peace. Always has. I'll do my very best, and for all our sakes, I hope you make it. Thank you. It was awfully nice of you to come. You'll be escorted back to the border. Do give my love to your president, will you? And Mrs. Coolidge, too. Your Highness, please, excuse me, this is most important. The bomb has had such a shaking up, I think better I give it a good look. As soon as possible. In fact, now. Yes, I do think Papa's right. Yes, well, do be careful, won't you, Papa? Thank you. You are a dad. All the time, it was a dad. Remarkable. Congratulations, sir. Papa, I'm proud of you. How's the bomb getting on? Never better, Will. Oh, fine. Fine. All right, carry on. <laughs> 